Awesome. And yeah, that's the thing. Like you said, with the offer, once we develop that for you, I think with your main one-on-one coaching packages, that's when your revenue started to really scale, right? Because when you have that really defined offer, like, look, if you really want to work with me, I'm speaking from Denzel's perspective. If you want to work with me and take your finances to the next level, this is the program for you. I think that made it to where the clients that you have now, they felt they needed your program, right? So they had that need aspect built into it and the offer itself not only makes sense for the client, but it also makes sense for you as you're scaling, right? Because before, when we started working together, you were looking to offer one-on-one coaching calls for you know 25 bucks or 50 bucks. Um, but if you look to make, let's say 10,000 a month, that'd be 80, 80 hours a week of calls or something like that. So that's why with your offer, you wanna make it of course where the client gets value and they get the end result that they're seeking, whether it's losing weight, growing their business, improving their finances. But at the same time, you also want to build it to where you can scale it, meaning you can bring on a lot of clients and still manage the workload. So that's why I think now you've really honed in on your offer, not only on the marketing side of it, but also the fulfillment side, right? Managing the one-on-one coaching calls, you know, where can people book the calls? How often can they book them? And things of that nature. So that also ties into the offer as well. But definitely, like you said, definitely. in day one, you'll never know exactly no. um, the type of setup you'll have. But that's why I think from you know, me gaining more experience and even working with you, my new clients have a much better idea of what they should start with. So that gives them uh, more progress in a shorter amount of time instead of them trying to figure it out on their own. Right. Yeah, yeah. I think once the offer, once you and I created the offer that I now uh, have in place today, it was, it was game over from there. Mm-hmm. It, yeah. it not only did it eliminate all the negativity uh and it eliminated from the the serious people from the lazy people Mm -hmm. you know it it really i was really able to hone in on the ones that actually wanted to work with me because there was a time where you know i was literally probably selling velocity banking more than i was teaching it so -hmm. there was a point where it was like i had to sell you then teach you then you actually do it and then get results where now today because of the amount of of content that i have out i'm no longer selling it it's literally Mm -hmm. you you come across it you're like wow this is good or this is bad you know and then you you click off but the people that stay are like they start learning they start learning they start learning then they just they go immediately they look for the offer Mm -hmm. So they're actually looking to see if I even have an offer. And this is why once I had it in place, game over, because I was able to scale. Mm. And then that person is already expecting what it is that they're looking for, and I'm offering it. So Mm -hmm. now I don't even have to explain the program of what the offer is. Don't even have to explain it, because I created something that they were looking for anyways. Mm -hmm. So that's why it makes them sign up even faster, creates that need, and then like the fulfillment side of things again i'm not selling it so that's Mm -hmm. that's two or three phone calls less to convince them to do this thing and because they're in it for a higher amount of money versus when i was charging fifty dollars or a hundred dollars or i was charging nothing what i noticed is that the cheaper the value of what i was offering to people the less committed they were to actually Mm -hmm. getting the results even the people that wanted to do velocity banking, they, they really thought that this was the way. But when they didn't have as much skin in the game, and that's when I, I started realizing, oh, my unique value proposition is, is this, and my niche is this, and my offer to work with me is this. And mm-hmm. I, I believe in myself so much that I'm going to charge this amount. And it's large enough for the person to commit to that. And that's where I started learning that dynamic that psychology mm-hmm. like like even with clothing it's like you know you could buy a louis vuitton bag or you can buy a knockoff mm-hmm. when you buy a louis you're gonna take ooh, you're gonna take such good care of that louis bag mm-hmm. but if it's a knockoff you get a scratch you you break a, a button you're probably not gonna be too quick on repairing that mm-hmm. but if you damaged your louis you are going to be hitting me up like day in and day out like you're gonna be like checking on the status of your Louis bag. Mm -hmm. So when people enroll in my program, when things go bad, they come right back. They're like, "Uh, uh, help me out Denzel. Uh, Oh, I got this going on. Or, oh my God, I just got denied for a line of credit. What do I do now? 
you know, so they're, they're treating me like the Louis Vuitton bag versus a knockoff nowadays. Before, yes. before it was, eh, you know, he's a kid and then, I don't know, maybe he knows what he's doing, maybe he doesn't. But, yeah. you know, I gave him 100 bucks and I really can't lose. If he tells me some good stuff, great. If whatever he tells me, if I don't do it, I'm really not in the hole for that much. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, you're in the hole if, you know, you invest money with yes. me you pay me you know and then we keep it going so those are those are some of the things that really really worked well and have been working well and now we're just honing in on it mm -hmm. absolutely i agree in, the, in terms of the fact that i recommend my clients charge even semi-premium prices when they're starting out because like you mentioned it's going to help them scale their revenue and scale their income but at the same time lead to a better client relationship because they're going to be bringing on people who are more committed we're more likely to get results because they're more committed. So even though they're paying you more money than, like you said, $50 or $100 before, these new clients are probably getting even better results because like you said, they're making a financial commitment to you, which is probably the biggest commitment anybody could possibly make. So they make that financial commitment that then really soaks in, like you said, in terms of the fact that like, wow, okay, I'm in the hole a little bit. I need to put in work. I need to make a return on my investment and get results. So that's when they actually go through your program, right? They watch the videos, they have the one-on-one -on -one calls with you, they complete the spreadsheets, and that's when they see the actual results. So that's why, if anything, charging higher prices, more premium prices, it's gonna bring better clients, more committed clients, it's gonna help you scale your revenue and scale your income, and at the same time, it's gonna give you more testimonials, which is gonna help you get more future clients. So there's just so many benefits to scaling your prices and not charging a low amount to start, because a lot of people, when they're starting out, they think their unique value proposition is going to be, oh, I charge lower than the competition. Um, and maybe for products, I can't say this for services, but maybe for products, that's a good strategy. But for services, uh, it's a different type of game because what you're offering technically isn't available on the marketplace, whether it's my program, yours, or even my other clients. What they're offering is one of a kind. Right? There's not another Denzel Rodriguez program out there. Technically, technically, like piece by piece, there's nothing like it that's exactly like it because, you know, it's you. You can't really duplicate you. I can't replicate me and things of that nature. So that's why with services, you can charge more premium prices even when you're starting out because it's a different value proposition in general. It's more unique than just a product on Amazon. Um, does that make sense, Denzel? Definitely. I mean, yeah. this was something that I had to overcome myself when... Mm -hmm. You know, when I first started out, there's the different dynamics. Like, I want to help people, but I also need to eat. Mm -hmm. So how do I help people but also be able to pay my bills, have money left over to invest myself, to save money, to help, my fa to help me? Uh, in order to help others, I need to have my household in order. Mm -hmm. I cannot preach a certain message if I'm not practicing that message in my own kingdom, in my own mm -hmm. economy, in my own household. So if I'm not doing those things, if I'm not valuing myself, right? If I'm telling all these mothers that you have this insane amount of authority in the household and you are valuable and you are precious and you are, you know, a queen, but yet me, the king that's talking to the queen is not actually practicing kingdom characteristics and valuing themselves at a high standard, then eventually it crumbles. And so that's mm -hmm. when I realized, I was like, okay, there's a, there's a dynamic between wanting to help people and then charging for it. Mm -hmm. And then figuring out the balance where it's like, now I've just simply decided if I'm gonna help someone help, meaning give, I'm not going to expect anything in return. I'm simply giving out of my heart. There is no loss on my end because I have such a high value proposition, mm -hmm. um, a, a top tier price point. Mm -hmm. So if I help five people for free, that's what I did. Nobody needs to know this. That's what I did. Mm -hmm. That makes me happy. I sleep well at night. Then I get five clients that paid me $1,500. Those five clients are not going to be jealous that I helped five people for free. Mm -hmm. No, not at all. They're, 
they're more than likely to get better results than the people I help for free. Yeah. Because the ones that you help for free usually are people that are not in the best financial position to afford what you have to offer. Mm -hmm. And you have that, you know, as a, as a, you know, ethical, moral human being, you want to be able to give your time to people, but also not waste it. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if somebody wants to be helped, they will go through every obstacle, right? They will fight to get to you, right? They will make the effort. And when you, when you see that, then you're able to say, okay, wow, that's, that this, this person is really serious. I'm going to put some time into that mm -hmm. and I'm going to give. But while simultaneously you're delivering your utmost service to that signature offer that you have in your, in your business, especially if you're a service-based business, products mm -hmm. is different. Like you said, product, yeah, you can come in at a lower price, right? And that was a selling point that I kind of rode for a little while, mm -hmm. which, which somewhat helped me. But then I started realizing this isn't a winning game to be less than the competition. That's not a mm -hmm. winning, that's not a winning strategy. In fact, you might end up getting people that you don't really want to work with that, yeah. that, that well, or, or, you know, people feel like they can just walk all over you, take advantage of your time and them mm -hmm. not even realizing, you know, Denzel works with over six, 700 individuals at mm -hmm. any given time, you know, and I get hundreds of emails and hundreds of questions. So, where does the divide, you know, the, the, the I got, I got, yeah, I got to draw my, my line in the sand and say, mm -hmm. Hey, I'm a King in order to get into my kingdom. You need to do X, Y, and Z. You need to surrender to what you think you know about X, Y, and Z. You need to pay to get into the kingdom, right? It's like anything you want to go to heaven. You need to sacrifice You need to have salvation. You need to repent, change your mind, change your way of thinking. It's going to cost you a lot mm -hmm. of things. So it's the same way when someone enters your business, they need to already know, okay, I'm coming here to spend money and I'm not trying to, you know, uh, oh, let me get a discount here and let me get a discount mm -hmm. there. Now, if it's there, you take advantage of it. Great. Yeah. But trying to negotiate with clients, that's a waste of your time. That's what I learned mm -hmm. is people trying to negotiate my offers, negotiate my pricing. I'm like, listen, if you don't, find value in me, don't buy me, mm -hmm. right? Do not invest in me. If you're looking for a cheap resource, a cheap service, look somewhere else because I'm mm -hmm. valuing myself at a high kingdom characteristic standard, mm -hmm. right? And I will live by that because I'm trying to bring people up. I'm not trying to scrimp and scrap and save and, and you know, like, there's, there's, there has to be a balance between that. So that's what I've learned so far, definitely. 100%. I agree. And that ties into my next point, uh, touching a bit on mindset. And I do cover this a bit more in my program, but just to go over kind of the general idea of it. So the consulting market in 2020, in terms of overall size, I have to get this exact number from my program, but I think it was about $325 billion. I mean, the entire consulting marketplace is worth about $325 billion this year alone. So I did the numbers and I'm like, okay, for me, you know, just alone to get seven figures, you know, a million dollars a year from that, it would be about 0 0.00007% out of the entire consulting market. Because I think sometimes when they come into this type of business, they overcomplicate it. They're like, oh, I want to make six figures, but uh, I don't know, this guy's doing a million and this guy's doing 10 million, but look at all these other people who maybe I know, like my uncle, he didn't do well with it. And then they start to overcomplicate the process of trying to get to that six figure, seven figure mark. And they think one thing that's common, they think that the marketplace isn't enough for them, meaning there's not enough clients for me. There's not enough demand. Like who's going to want to pay me? But that's why breaking down those numbers, and that's for seven figures. If you only want six figures a year in the consulting market, um, you would only take up to make $100,000 a year, 0.000007%. That's small of the marketplace to make six figures. And I say that because that just shows anybody can come in and within a year, year and a half, make six figures. Like you're not making a debt into the marketplace that's worth $325 billion. Um, so that's really something where I like to talk to my clients with that sort of uh, mindset in the beginning just to help them once they move forward into the main client acquisition system because 
uh, mindset really does play a huge part. And Denzel, I'm sure you can agree with this. Um, once people actually start to go into the process of launching, getting results, you know, getting clients, for them to really scale, it's really a mindset thing where, like I said, if somebody thinks that the marketplace isn't big enough for them, and even though their goal is to only make six figures, that's why I just want to showcase that. For anybody watching that maybe thinks that, for you to make six figures, again, you're only taking up 0.000007% of the entire consulting market. So bottom line, there's room for you in the marketplace. Um, don't worry about there not being enough clients or not enough demand. Um, Denzel, do you agree? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely definitely agree. I mean, I, I, I did multiple six figures mm -hmm. in my first year, and I was charging between a hundred dollars and a thousand dollars like it's not it's not I don't want to say uh, like hard hard like it's there's there's challenges mm -hmm. but really it's overcoming who you are as a person and how much value that you believe you bring to the table that's mm -hmm. the ultimate key here mm -hmm.